Hi, this is Diane from Teach Pre-K. I am here in my home office today and I wanna share with you some of my favorite Thanksgiving math activities. These are all in my TPT store, Teach Pre-K. You can find most of them in my All About Thanksgiving five-day lesson plan. And then I have tons of Thanksgiving um, math and literacy little like one-off centers too that you might really like they're differentiated and really great so for the holidays i like to do a variety of different centers i like to cover as many concepts as i have i kind of use holiday times as review times so we'll go through some things that we have worked on before and i just kind of want to see where the kids are now I don't do a whole lot of assessing, but I do have a general idea of where they are. So one thing I like to do, and this is in my lesson plan that I was telling you about, I have these cute printables. I have them in black and white and color. So I've got these that I put into these cute little uh, learning resources, uh, trace and erase pockets. Um, these are great because I also have added some Thanksgiving um, vocabulary to this. So it's also got a little bit of literacy. It just says, I can draw shapes. The pilgrim's house is a square. The Native American's house is a triangle. The turkey platter is an oval. The table is a rectangle. So we get our dry erase, erase marker. And these, of course, would be flat on the table. So I don't know how well I'm going to trace. But, you know, you trace the shapes. And the ones that are in black and white, you can color the pictures too. So you can trace the shapes and color the pictures. So it's kind of like super big activity. I use these giant pom-poms as erasers. They're awesome. So you just erase, the, erase it when you're done. And then on the other side, I have the Thanksgiving table. And it's just, I can draw circles. Circles are kind of a hard thing for kids to draw. So this is just a lot of fine motor practice. And they get to make all the plates on the table. And again, I have this in color and black and white. It's a great printable. They can color the food on the table, the forks, the knives, the cornucopia in the middle, and here you go. So that is a good shape activity. It doesn't take very long. And like I said, color or black and white. So they can trace or they can trace in color. Um, another activity that I love is I love to do a lot of graphing during Thanksgiving. And one of the graphing things that I do is this spin, graph, and count colorful turkeys. So you spin with the spinner right here over this little circle with all the turkeys. And whatever color you get, you color in with your dry erase marker, just like that. Um, then when you're done, when you've gone through as many turns as you want to go through, you count how many each turkey has. And it gives you this opportunity to count to talk about which has more, which has less, are any the same. So you're using so much math language and good vocabulary for the kids. Uh, the little spinner is clear, it's awesome. Uh, these are from hand to mind. You can get like a set of, I think six or 10 or 12 or something like that just on Amazon. So it's hand, number two, mind. Just search that on Amazon, clear spinners and it'll it'll give you lots of options they're great this one actually has a physical circle on it it's cool but i just use scotch tape to put those on they're awesome so i don't have to poke a hole and and fight with a spinner but anyway after we do that we do how many each kid will have a how many and or sometimes i just do a, a how many for the group so we had you know one turquoise three green two red seven blue, four orange, and six brown. So we see, hmm, which one had the most? The blue had the most. Which one had the least? It looks like the turquoise only had one. So then we're also seeing what the numbers look like. And they get to watch me form the numbers. Um, another activity I love to do, I absolutely love count and stack. So I've made these little pilgrim count and stacks. They, each of the pilgrims, oops, sorry, that one's upside down. Um, this one's for my three-year-olds. We're really focusing on numbers one through five right now. And I also have right here, one through 10, and I have a one through 15 too. So we've got this, we'll put, place them flat on the table. I give them a container of Unifix cubes. For the number one, we put one Unifix cube. For two, we make a tower of two. 
four, three, three, and so on. So sometimes they fall over. Um, you don't have to use Unifix cubes. I have these other little circle stackers that are a little bit smaller, um, but you know, kids, kids are gonna knock things down and they get a little frustrated sometimes, but that is another activity that I really like. Um, I have got a count and clip that's really fun. This is one of the first activities that I've made. I've updated my count and clip in my lesson plan, but so the kids will get a stack of one through 10 and I would probably do one through five for the little guy. So we count one, two, three, four turkeys and we look at these three numbers over there and we talk about how to open a clothespin too. At the beginning, I say, show me your pinchy fingers. We're gonna use our pinchy fingers on the open side of the clothespin to open the close side of the clothespin. So I always usually go through that like while I'm explaining centers to the whole group. So we will pinch our clothespin, hover over the four, clip the four, because we know that that is number four. So that is the count and clip. Um, I also have a position word game. And I got this idea from Tara West at Little Minds at Work. She had this really cute uh, position word game that I, I bought and I loved it. So I decided to make one for Thanksgiving. So I have these little blue baskets that I got at the dollar store and I just made these little um, cards for um, my class. These are not for sale and they're, they're not in my lesson plan. But then I made these little turkeys that stand up on their own. They're so cute. They're just a little um, clip art and I just Velcroed them to a Unifix cube. So they stand up and I've done this with other things too when I've needed a little manipulative that I don't have. So we have stacks of these cards. The kids would draw a card and everybody has a basket. Everybody has a turkey. So I'm like, oh, what is this? Put the turkey in front of the basket. So we'd have our little basket and we'd put the turkey in front of it just like the card shows. Um, there's also like beside the basket, under the basket, inside the basket, above the basket, things like that. So there's all those options. And that's a really good thing, especially with your younger kids, that position words are not easy for them. My three-year-olds right now, they don't know in front or behind. Some of them do, but not all of them. I have another numeral recognition game. I've got these mats. This is a draw and cover. And I've got these turkey cards that look exactly like the turkeys on the mat. These will be uh, face down on the table. Everyone will have a mat and everyone will have these amazing clear button markers. You can find these on Amazon and also um, a lot of people use these for light tables. They're kind of considered a, a light table toy. But we'll flip the card up and let's say we've got five. So we would take our little button and our little mat and we would find five. And let me tell you the reason and show you the reason I love these buttons, they're clear. I can see that they've covered the right number. They can see that they've covered the right number. Their neighbor can see that they've covered the right number. So we all help each other out because we know we wanna cover the five. And how we finish the game is we cover all the numbers. So that is the draw and cover. Um, Got another super fun thing. I used to get a magazine called The Mailbox for preschool teachers, and it would have these great templates. I had a template of a turkey body that you put clothespins to, and you could write the um, number on the body, so you could print out as many as you needed, write your numbers. Um, I like having these little dots so the kids know where to position the clothespins. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, these are in my lesson plan, just like this. So I use actual circles in my, um, in my printable so they don't look quite this raggedy. I used a Sharpie on these. This was before I decided, hey, wait a minute, how can I make this better? And so I put these there. We go through how to use a clothespin just like we always do. You pinch the open side with your pinchy fingers to open up the closed side. You hover over where you want it, you let it go, there it goes. So we know we need to put four clothespins on this. So we are counting, we are using our numeral recognition, we are using our fine motor skills. Ta-da! And we've got a great center that's really fun. I'm starting to put feathers on my little turkey that had no feathers. So they love that. That's really fun. Um, 
This is another thing that I love. Dry erase marker. Um, this is a count and trace. We count the three little Native Americans. I use all Thanksgiving pictures. This is in my lesson plan that's on Teachers by Teachers. Um, you use a dry erase marker. If you laminate these, I think I have these color and black and white, so you can do black and white. And then you just trace. I'm doing this without looking, so I'm doing a terrible job. But you trace the number. It really probably looks how like how my three-year-olds would do it. Here we go. Oop. You trace the number by following the arrows. So it's pretty obvious there. And then when you're done, you get your big pom-pom and you erase it. So guys, honestly, invest in some big pom-poms. You will not regret it. So there is that. So that's another fun activity. I love counting books from Scholastic. The one I use for Thanksgiving is 10 Fat Turkeys. So this is a backward counting book and I decided I would use it to introduce 10 frames. So I've got two sets of 10 frames and I have these in color and black and white too. So we have got one that's filled in with the numbers filled in. So you've got some numeral recognition and counting there. And then I have got one that's empty. I have these little turkey cards. Every child will get one of these and I will ask them to put these turkey cards on every spot and we count as we do it. We do it together. So does everybody have 10? So we fill all these spots. These are cut perfectly to fit these. As we read the book, 10 Fat Turkeys Countdown Book, we will take one turkey away from the 10 frame. As we do it, we'll use our math language. How many do you have? How many have we taken off? Um, is it the same as the book? If it's not the same as the book, let's go back and let's see what we're doing. So that's also fun. Anything that they can do with the book, they love because they can see the pictures and they can also see what they're doing and how it matches up. It's really cute. We can count the turkeys in the book. Um, last but not least, uh, this would be super easy to make on your own. This is in my lesson plan, but just go to Google, find pictures of apple pie and mashed potatoes and pumpkin pie and turkey and cranberries and all that stuff. I will lay these out on a line, like um, just one straight row. I will give everybody their name on a sticky. I will call them up. I usually have these like on the bottom of my uh, smart board whiteboard. So then they would put their name, like if apple pie was their favorite, they would put it above. And then I've instructed them that if you like apple pie too, you put your name on top of, let's say Colleen put her name here. And then it's like Jerry would put his name on top of Colleen's. When we're done, we look at all the different, <coughs> excuse me, Thanksgiving foods. And we see, hold on, I'm not gonna make it through this. Okay, much better. We go through and we count how many names are above each food. We talk about, you know, which has the most, which has the least. Poor green beans doesn't have any. Nobody in the class likes green beans. I love green beans. I usually participate in the graphing. So I'm in the graph. My aid is in the graph. If it's a two aid day, both aids do their names. So we just talk about our Thanksgiving food, the foods that we eat. We get to hear other foods that kids eat. I'm so sorry. <coughs> uh, but... It's a great whole group graphing activity. And like I said, I live in Utah. We have bad weather in November. So I can go through, like, we can play a couple of games, and then we'll do a little Thanksgiving food graph and talk about Thanksgiving, and it can eat up some of our indoor recess time. So it's another fun thing to do. And kids love talking about what they do and what their family does. It kind of brings us all closer together, and that's why we have holidays anyway. So thank you so much. Um, I will also be doing a video about my favorite literacy activities. So thanks for joining me.